Are you tired of creating multiple SSIDs or Wi-Fi networks to maintain your network security? Hi, my name is Tony and in this video I'm going to show you how you can still maintain your network security with VLANs using only one SSID and we're going to do that with private pre-shared keys. Let's dive right in. All right, so now that you have a basic understanding of PPSKs and what a private pre-shared key really is, let's go ahead and create a couple of VLANs because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply a PPSK to a particular VLAN so that we can maintain our network security. So first thing we need to do is add a couple more VLANs. Let's go up to the network node. As you can see, I'm already signed into the GCC. Left menu, we're gonna select network settings and then LAN. And then here you can see I have my trusted network and my guest network that we used in recent videos, but we need to add a couple more VLANs for this demonstration. So we're gonna add an IoT VLAN and a camera VLAN. So we'll click the add button. We'll give the IoT VLAN an ID of 30, and I'll call it IoT. Then we'll come down to IPv4 settings. We'll enable that and we'll start with 192.168.30.1 for the IP address. And for the subnet mask, it'll be 255.255.255.0. And then we're going to enable DHCP service so we can distribute IP addresses on this subnet. We'll give the gateway address the same as the IP4 address of 192.168.30.1. And then for the range, I'm gonna give it the whole thing since it's an IoT network. So I'm gonna give it 30.2 all the way through 30.254, but you can choose the range that best suits your needs. And then finally, for the preferred DNS server, we're gonna give it 30.1, the IP address of the gateway. And then the secondary uh, DNS server will be 1.1.1.1. And we'll click Save. We'll go ahead now and add the other VLAN for the camera network. We'll call this VLAN ID 40. And we'll call this camera for now, and then we'll, again, we'll enable the IPv4 settings. The address will be 192.168.40.1. The subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0. Again, we will enable the DHCP service so that the devices on this network can get the appropriate addresses distributed. So we're gonna give it the gateway address of 40.1. And then for the range, again, I'm just gonna give it the entire range of 40.2 all the way up to 40.254. And then we'll come down and we'll do the DNS servers. We'll give it 40.1, the gateway address, and 1.1.1.1 for the alternate. We'll go ahead and we'll click Save. Okay, now that we have our additional VLANs set up, we can move on to creating our SSID. Okay, so before we create that SSID, I want to come over to the left menu, click on Switch Management and Switches, just to confirm that the two additional VLANs that we created in the last step carried over to the switch and that the switch is aware of them. So now that we're in the switch itself, let's come over to the left menu, click on switching, click on VLAN, and we can see here that VLAN 30 and VLAN 40 have been added and the ports have been tagged correctly. So we should be good to go. Let's get out of here and go back to the GCC and get that SSID created. Come up to Wi-Fi Management, click on SSIDs, and here we're gonna add 
a brand new SSID. Now, these SSIDs that I have here have been used in previous videos, which is why they exist. But if this was blank, that's fine. Just go ahead and click on Add. Let's enable the SSID. We'll give it a name, and I'm just going to call it Test Wi-Fi. Actually, I changed my mind as I was typing. We'll call it Test PPSK Wi-Fi. I'm going to leave the SSID band set to 2.4 and 5. However, because one of the VLANs is an IoT VLAN, this not, might not be the best way to go because some of the older IoT devices have a problem when the 5G band is enabled. So, But for the purpose of this video, we're just going to let it go because we're focusing on creating and using PPSKs. So again, just keep that in mind that if you were doing this for an IoT network that you probably just want to have 2.4 enabled. So let's go down to access security. Security mode, we're going to leave at WPA2, although if your devices support WPA3, that's a better security. Under WPA key mode, we're going to click the drop down and we're going to select PPSK without radius. And we're going to come down to device management, make sure our access point is selected, and go ahead and click on save. Okay, so now that the SSID is created, we need to go ahead and create the PPSKs for each of the VLANs. So let's come over to the left menu, select PPSK. We'll create one for users that will be on the trusted Wi-Fi. We'll create one for the IoT users or devices, and we'll create one for the camera devices. So we're going to have a total of three. Let's click the blue Add button to get started. Under the SSID name dropdown, we're going to select the Wi-Fi network or SSID that we want to use with this PPSK. For account, since we're not using radius, I could pretty much put anything I want here in alphanumeric form. So I'm just going to call this main network. However, if we were doing PPSK, if you were a business and you were doing PPSK with radius, you would put the user account of the radius server here. But anyway, let's go ahead and call this main network. I could have said trusted network, but that's fine. Here's where we're going to assign the password. I'm going to keep it simple for this demonstration, but make sure in production you have a solid password. And then for maximum number of access clients, I'm going to just set it to a random number of 50. The default range is 1 to 100. And then we're not going to set the maximum upload or maximum download because this is the trusted network. Same thing for the VLAN ID. We're going to leave that blank for the trusted network. And I'm going to go ahead and call this main network. Just give it a description. OK, let's come over here and click Save. And we have our first PPSK created. We're going to repeat the same thing two more times. However, just slightly different. We have to link it to the VLAN. So let's click the Add button. SSID name drop down. Again, we're going to choose the test PPSK Wi-Fi. And I'm just going to call this IoT. And the password. The number of access clients. 20. For the maximum upload, let's limit this one. Let's test it out. So we'll give it a maximum upload of 5 and a maximum download of 10. And we're going to attach this to VLAN ID 30. And I'll call this description IoT. And one more time for the camera network. Let's click the Add button. From the drop down, test PPSK, we'll call this camera. The password, the number of clients, probably don't have more than 10. Maybe some people do in their home. And then not going to limit the bandwidth, upload or download. And this will be VLAN 40, and we'll call this cameras and click on Save. OK, we have our SSID created. We have our 
three PPSKs created. Now we just need to test it out and see if all this actually works. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can test this out. My iPhone is on the screen. Let me click into my settings, click into Wi-Fi. Hopefully the test PPSK Wi-Fi will show up. And there it is. So let's go ahead and get connected. So first we'll connect using the password for what the main users or the trusted Wi-Fi users would access. So very simple password. Let's see if we get an IP address in the 80 subnet. So we'll click on information and we'll scroll down and you can see we have an address 192.168.80.46. So that was successful. Okay, now I'm going to tell this phone to forget this network so that we can try connecting again using one of the other passwords for one of the other VLANs. Okay, so let's see if the PPSK shows up again. There it is. And now this time we'll put in the password for the IoT network which should give us an IP address in the 192.168.30 subnet. So the password was very simple, 12345678. Let's say join. Okay, so it looks like we have an IP address, 192.168.30.201. So I want to do a speed test because I believe this was the subnet that we did some limiting, some speed limiting on. So let's come over to here and let's click on speed test. Okay, so looks like we have a download speed of around eight to nine, which is close. There we go, 10. And we should only have an upload speed of around five, give or take. Okay, so it looks like the limiting worked as well. Let's get out of here. Let's go back into the settings. Let's forget the network. So we can test out the final PPSK. We just need to wait for it to repopulate and show up again. And there it is. And this time we'll put in the password for the, what is the camera VLAN? Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very simple for this demonstration. And if everything works well here, we should get an IP address in the 192.168.40 network. So if we scroll down, 192.168.40.201. All right, I just want to take a moment to provide a little clarification on what you just saw. Since the iPhone doesn't show the input of the passwords as a security measure, you're probably all wondering, I thought the passwords for each PPSK were supposed to be different, and they were. So for the main network, I actually input the numbers one through nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. For the IoT network, even though you heard me count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I actually put in all ones and I was counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the same thing for the camera network, I actually input nine twos and I was just counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I put in the correct number of twos. So just in case you were wondering, thinking like, hey, he's putting in the same password for all three PPSKs. Actually, I wasn't, but I just wanted to provide that clarification for you all. So there you have it. One SSID, multiple unique passwords. That's the power of using PPSKs. Is it for everyone? Maybe. Maybe not. That's for you to decide. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel 
give it a like, and don't forget to hit that little bell so that you're alerted to more Grand String networking tips along with regular networking tips. Let me know down in the comments below if you'll be using PPSKs in your own network. Until next time, keep your network fast, secure, and smarter than ever. Take care.